Hi guys, my name is CT, and I'm going to do a quick tutorial here comparing picture profiles on the XC15 and how they relate to dynamic range. So let's just jump into it. Okay, so section one, the footage as shot and exposure normal. This was about 65% on the waveform monitor. Here we've got um, my roommate, and he was kind enough to model for me. I pulled him away from the YouTube he was watching on the screen back there. So the three picture profiles that I'm using for this test um, are standard wide DR, which you see right here, and then Canon Log. And I figured of the nine or so profiles that this camera had, these were going to be the ones that were most commonly going to be used. Um, standard is pretty straightforward. YDR is similar to standard, though it does try to capture more dynamic range. Although it needs um, some curves put on it in post, and it'll need, you know, possibly some saturation, though not as much as log would, and then it will need, like, a bit of sharpening. Then log Log is a little more intense to where you need, um, you gotta adjust the highs, you gotta adjust the lows, you gotta adjust a lot in the saturation and curves, um, and a quite, then quite a bit of sharpening. So, um, YDR is just a less labor, slightly less labor intensive, um, way to get some more dynamic range. So, section two, the footage normalized. Woohoo! Um, and in this case, so for all of this, I took the I took those same clips and I just tried to bring them to where I took a sample on the skin note tone around in his cheek area and put it at 65% on the waveform monitor. So now we're getting to hear the YDR. Um, and in a second here, the log, here's the log um, where I've, in this case, where I've, Try to normalize it um, as best as I know how, make it look um, true to life and at a good exposure. So here we have that um, overexposure, 95%, and as I've brought down those highlights, that looks pretty terrible. Um, in the wide DR, that one's holding really, really well. So that was pretty, pretty overexposed, and it came down just fine, and it's looking really good. Here's the log. I'd say it looks even better. I'm using the um, the Able Cine uh, Canon Log to YDR LUT, and I chose the YDR LUT um, versus the Rec 709 LUT so that I, after I applied it, I'd still have some some wiggle room and it not uh, clamp the image too hard. Okay, so I'm gonna pause um, here for a second. Um, this is on the Canon Log in the very high exposure. So this is on the waveform monitor at time of recording um, at a 95% in log, whereas the previous set was 95% in standard profile. This was a little bit higher. And I, I'll go ahead and say that I was, I was quite surprised with how well that it did. Um, one thing just to point out is that um, there's no LUT applied to this shot. Um, I, I tried it with a LUT, and I'll show you what that looked like in, this, in a second. Um, but with it so high, uh, with the exposure so close to the max of what log could do, um, the LUT was not helping me, and it would, it would start to clip stuff. Um, but doing it manually, I was able to just work in the uh, darker parts of the image to and tweak it to get it to look right. Um, and I was really, really pleased with the result. Okay, so moving right along here, this is that same shot, Canon Log in very high exposure. And this is using the Able Cine LUT um, to YDR. And as you can see, we've got clipping going on in the highlights and it just does not roll off um, into the highlights in a pleasing way at all in my opinion. 
Okay, section three, the footage graded. So my intent with this section was to give you sort of two different color grades for each shot. Uh, the first one um, is Ascent, the Ascend Lut Pack Emulsion, and the second one being Thriller. Um, and my thinking there was, in the case of Emulsion, it's, it's a pretty basic filmic type of look and just to see how each how each exposure level and each picture profile handled it. Um, and then in the case of the Thriller LUT, it was to just give you a bit of color separation. So it's trying to push all the shadows into that teal color, the highlights um, into the orange color. Um, and this was just to answer the question for myself, you know, can you do a color-based grade or sort of color masking using um, an 8-bit in an 8-bit color space um, and, 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 I, and I was surprised I felt like this um, the, the XC15 did very well both in YDR and especially in long um, and my only um, the only drawback to me in log is just sort of the lack of sharpness because I felt like um, in most of these, the standard was the sharpest. The YDR was just a slightly less sharp, but still pretty good. And, and but the log, like you can you can just throw sharpness at it, and it just eats it up. It is a fairly soft image. Um, and, and then of course, as we're reaching the highest end of what the sensor can do, um, it's uh, considerably less sharp. So th the main thing I learned in this process was to go ahead and start using either YDR or Canon Log. The dynamic range is so much better, and the grading it of it is really not so bad. Um, if you're using YDR, be sure to put an S curve on it. Um, that's what really brings back the vibrancy and gives you that nice contrasty look that you're probably used to. Um, and, and then if you're using log in very, very high exposure, you can do it, um, but don't use a normalizing LUT in that particular scenario. Um, go ahead and just do it manually and it's, it's going to look a lot better. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, um, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.